What's up guys, I'm Phoenix Master one and welcome back for some more Fire Mom Heroes and this is gonna be my comprehensive analysis and review of the weapon refines for Legendary Ephraim, Legendary Lin, Male Kana and also Infantry Ephraim. I'll go over the best builds that you can run for different game modes like PvE, Arena and Aether Raids and I've already covered 2 Zero Legends 3 weapon refines in a separate video so the link to it is gonna be in the description and you can watch it after this video. Follow laws of YouTube instead of following laws of Sakai and leave a like and subscribe of course only if you enjoy and that would help out the channel a lot and with that said let us get going. Legendary Ephraim is easily one of the best Lance Cavaliers in the entire game because he has got his Weapon Refine and his Remix this month. We also have original Ephraim who can get access to Flame Segment by spending 150 Divine Dews. So I'll be covering both of them but here Legendary Ephraim is clearly the winner because Solar Brace 2 is a really really good Remix skill and he also gets this Weapon Refine that makes him into a very reliable Gale Force unit and in general a Cavalier who can easily trigger his specials. Flame Segment always gave you the auto follow up but now the conditions are even easier to trigger. So in the player phase you're always going to be getting the auto follow up but if you need to get that in the enemy phase you just need to be solo and that's pretty much it. He can get extra attack and defense from the primary effect and then with his refine he can debuff the opponent's attack and defense for effectively getting plus 9 attack, plus 9 defense and plus 4 resistance during the combat. This improves his bulk and also his damage output. And now let's move on to the part which makes him into one of the best Lance Cavaliers in the game. So he needs to be above 25% HP and if that condition is met then he can get easy special charges per attack in both phases. So this is absolutely incredible because cavalry units don't have access to a lot of special acceleration skills. Heavy Blade is pretty much their only option and Legendary Ephraim no longer needs to run Heavy Blade Sacred Seal and he can just run something like Attack Defense Solo to just get more stats. And the reason why this is so amazing is because Solar Brace 2 gives him the anti-guard effect. So nothing is going to be stopping his special charges. The special charges work similarly to Ellie Wood's Blazing Durandal Weapon Refine. So this allows him to spam high cooldown specials like Gale Force and Ignis really well. And because of the anti-guard built into his weapon, he's a really consistent Gale Force unit who doesn't really care about meeting Heavy Blade checks and he can also hit really hard if he's running Ignis as a special. Kanto 2 built into his Solar Brace is absolutely amazing for a Cavalier, allows him more mobility options and then finally he also gets the 10 HP self healing after the combat which is actually really synergetic with the Flame Segment effect because keep in mind that he needs to be above 25% HP. His Weapon Refine and Remix makes him into a really really good Lance Cavalier and he's quite unique in that class type as well because of the effects and that is quite impressive considering the fact that his sister Brave Erika sets a very very high standard for a Lance Cavalier but still Lesring Ephraim is able to stand out and be a really fantastic unit in today's metagame. A lot of people are going to be finding him useful in different game modes, he's quite universally useful overall. Unfortunately because Legendary Ephraim depends on Flame Siegman's auto follow up, he's gonna get hard countered by any kind of fast unit who has got null follow up and there are quite a lot of those so you have to watch out for them but at least you're gonna be charging up your special so that is something. Infantry Ephraim also enjoys this Flame Siegman weapon refine because his original Siegman's weapon refine was one of the first and it has not aged well whatsoever so there's no reason to run that just run Flame Segment and because Infantry Ephraim can have access to skills like Time Pulse and Infantry Pulse, he can function a bit differently than Legendary Ephraim because he obviously does not have access to Solar Brace. Overall, Legendary Ephraim is going to be the better unit but still this is a pretty nice boost for Infantry Ephraim because he's been long forgotten but now this weapon definitely brings him into the relevance and he might get a resplendent version down the line as well considering the fact that he's a lord. So yeah things are looking pretty promising for Infantry Ephraim now after such a long time. I'll be going over the builds of both of these units but first I'm gonna start with Legendary Ephraim because he's essentially the star of this video in my opinion. So this is the first budget build and if you have Legendary Ephraim in your barracks you should at least have this kind of budget build because this is really useful in Arena Assault because with Ignis he can do a lot of damage and he can basically counter Fallen Edelgard in both phases. It's a bit preferred to bait her out so that you do not have to take damage from her bonfire and because he just bypasses the guard effect in her armored wall he can easily trigger Ignis and he can also just make a follow up attack because he's going to be much faster than Fallen Edelgard so the follow up negation of first is not going to be working against him. So really fantastic unit for just taking care of Fallen Edelgard 
in either phase and Ignis does provide him with some really good damage output with attack defense solo and the extra defense that he gets from his flame segment. You can also run Gale Force on him and like I said before he's a really consistent user of this because of the anti-guard built into his weapon and the easy special charges that he can get. So you can simply run this with Rouse attack defense or you can even run a smoke skill like defense smoke or savage blow. Slotzy is definitely pretty flexible. So you just want to run double attack defense solo and this can still work out on a budget build. Ephraim is really fantastic in Aether Raid's offense as a Gale Force Cavalier because he doesn't really care about meeting Heavy Blade checks and the biggest problem with any kind of Gale Force Cavalier in Aether Raids is that it's really hard to trigger Heavy Blade because you're facing units like Saros, Duma who boost up the attack of the enemy's team and they're also running stuff like Duo Peony, Joint Drive attacks and all of those things so it becomes really hard to trigger Heavy Blade and Ephraim doesn't really have to care about that. And he's also got Kanto and his Solar Brace, so that makes for some really good offensive hit and run plays with the safety fence. His style of guild forcing is by using hit and run or just using him as a cleanup unit. And he cannot really be made as a Wings of Mercy beacon because he gets the healing from his Solar Brace. So that could be annoying for some people, but still overall he's a really solid unit. And he can be used in the Astro Season. It's a bit easier to hit and run in that season from my experience. And you also have the support of Regan there, so double Kanto can be a lot of fun. But then again, you can also use him in the light season because there's no Regan in the light season, so you can have a Counter Cavalier in a sense. So he's really fantastic in either of these seasons. You can also run a build with Ignis to do a lot of damage to many of the bulky units that you might face in Aether Raid's offense. But I would argue that Brave Erika is much better at that tank busting role. And Legendary Ephraim shines with this kind of Gale Force build. Quicken Pulse allows him to have a 4 turn Gale Force which can just let you trigger Gale Force even on some ranged units that might be on the front lines. So Quicken Pulse is really really important. He can also be used in Aether Raid's defense as a Cavalier who can do a lot of damage with Ignis and he's quite bulky so against many of the near save units he can definitely hit pretty hard and uh, on a budget you can definitely go with attack defense solo and have blade session. Blade Session is important because you want to have enough speed to bypass the follow-up negation of units like Brave Hector. So that's why the extra speed helps you just bypass the follow-up negation and it is not to be ignored, especially at low merges. Solar Brace does have Kanto and that's why you don't want to run any kind of assist skill on Ephraim because the AI can be annoying with the Kanto unit and they might just loop again and again so that's why running no assist is much better on him. At higher investments you can definitely run ARD attack defense and even run fatal smoke and fatal smoke is going to be really good against many of the physical threats who run mystic boost sacred seal and the safe tanks of that nature. And finally he can be run in arena as a really fantastic fire legendary unit with B dual cavalry 4. So because solar brace is a 300 SP slot B skill he can run the dual skill and another 300 SP slot C skill and that allows him to score like a 180 BST unit. And that is not at all bad for an old legendary unit like this who can also appear on the remix banners and you can get him with the sparks. So it's a bit easier to plus and merge him and he can function pretty well because he has got the Kanto effect and that is just really invaluable in arena where you don't have access to a lot of the positioning skills and you also have Gale Force as a really consistent special that you can trigger. Other Lance Cavaliers and other Cavaliers in general have to run Heavy Blade and Gale Force Ephraim doesn't really have to worry about that. Attack Defense Menace is pretty much his best expensive slotsy skill at higher investment and you can also run a cat skill in a slot A to get a bit more bulk and a bit more attack and he can function in both phases with a build like this with either Gale Force or Ignis. Now let's go over the builds of Infantry Ephraim. So on a budget you can definitely run Death Blow and Desperation on him. He does get the auto follow up so you can make use of the Desperation and in the Desperation range he can trigger Moonbow so that could be pretty nice on a budget. And you can also go with the Gale Force build. Even on a budget, this is going to be working out fine. Again, like I said, having some speed on your Ephraim is going to be helping you just bypass the follow-up negation units. So you can run attack speed solo as well as a Sacred Seal. If you want to invest a bit more into him, then Lull Attack Defense is a fantastic slot B option for him. And you can run double attack defense solo and simply run Ignis so that he can trigger that special and do a lot of damage. At higher investments, you definitely want to run Time Pulse on him so that Gale Force becomes a 4 turn special so you can trigger that against the ranged units. And Lull Attack Defense like I said is a pretty fantastic option. Double Attack Defense Solo is pretty good on him as it can work in both phases. And similar to how Legendary Ephraim is really good in Aether Raid's offense, even Infantry Ephraim is pretty amazing but in a different role. He can normally function as a hit and run unit because of lack of Kanto 
And of course, he doesn't have the cavalry movement, but he can work in Gale Force teams that require a unit to fall into the Wings of Mercy range, like maybe Air Force with Air with Disarm Trap or Ninja Lin with Disarm Trap and Fury. So with those kinds of team compositions, you can use him as a Wings of Mercy unit and he can easily trigger Gale Force without really caring about the Heavy Blade checks and stuff like that. You can also run infantry pulse on him because he's got pretty good HP. So he can pulse down units like Dagger who are also used on a Gale Force team. And Quicken Pulse allows him to have a 4 turn Gale Force which is extremely important to have. You can also run him with Time Pulse and run another Sacred Seal that can give you even more attack. And the extra speed again to bypass follow up negation. So he can be run with Veluria and he can have a 1 tap Gale Force where he just has to hit the opponent once and he can charge up his Gale Force. So that's gonna be possible if you run that. But even without Veluria, Time Pulse is still a pretty fantastic option on him. He's not as potent as Legendary Ephraim in Arena, but still he can work with Beedle Infantry 4. Lull Attack Defense is a must in Slot B because in Arena, units are gonna be running the Rally skills. So it helps a lot and with his high HP, you can run Panic Ploy as a budget option for Slot C. Ether and Gale Force are both pretty good special options. Ether allows you to have that self-sufficiency so that he can stay in the HP threshold of Flame Segment. And the healing is nice because he can function in both phases. And you can also run him with Gale Force and even have Odd Tempest which can allow you to have that extra movement. He doesn't have Kanto but still it can be pretty good with Gale Force. Legendary Lin gets a huge upgrade this month with this Weapon Refine and the remix that she had before. So the remix gets complemented really well with this refine and the refine is mainly the thing which makes her into a really solid and really good unit now. So she was known as one of the worst legendary units before but now that's no longer the case. The tables have turned and in fact legendary Lin is a really solid, viable and pretty good unit I would say. So on paper it might seem like she's still gonna be underwhelming but that is not the case in reality and for that I have the calx to show you her potential. So this is a plus one merge legendary Lin with attack tactic and speed tactic buff and 10 dragon flowers. So I'm showing these calx even before the builds because you can see her potential. Against brave hector a plus 10 merge farce brave hector he just dies that's it he's dead. So. <laughs> That makes Lin into a really solid counter pick against Brave Hector. The newest Brave Marth at plus one merge, fully buffed with his full effects active from Genesis Falchion, dies, just dies, to a green unit, a legendary Lin. Now Brave Edelgard of course has the damage reduction and this is a plus 10 Brave Edelgard, but still legendary Lin does a pretty decent job for such a low merge unit uh, for bringing down Brave Edelgard down to less than half of her HP and this is a neutral matchup, Legendary Lin does not have any kind of advantage. And then against uh, the infamous Fallen Edelgard who is plus one merge, Legendary Lin still does a pretty decent job. Of course the damage reduction again is gonna be annoying for her but still she does pretty good amount of damage and if you take care of the damage reduction of Fallen Edelgard by attacking with some other unit or you just dance up Legendary Lin then this kind of Fallen Edelgard is pretty much dead. I've not even analyzed her weapon or remix and still I'm just showing you these calcs to just make it sure that you know that Legendary Lin is not actually that bad of a unit anymore. I mean she's not gonna be game breaking or anything like that but she's clearly pretty good now and definitely quite viable. Even at low merges and at higher merges she can uh, definitely pack quite a punch. Her damage output is no slouch now. So now let's analyze her weapon and laws of Sake 2. Combining these two weapons and skills, you can essentially get plus 16 attack and speed and plus 6 defense and resistance with really really easy conditions. So these extra stats definitely help Legendary Lin quite a lot and then she gets a pretty unique effect in Impenetrable Dark built into her weapon. So yes, this is the same skill of Bramimon but she has this in her weapon and this skill basically forces the opponent to challenge Lin in a 1v1 final destination, no items and uh, this pretty much disables any kind of out of combat support of the foes in form of drives, flame, duo Hilda, any of those out of combat support. This doesn't really disable the save skills because the save skills are not support skills, they are individual skills of a unit. So Impenetrable Dark only stops the out of combat support skills and because of that Legendary Lin becomes a pretty solid unit in Ether Raid's defense and in general because with this calc which I showed you, this is a plus 10 Hector, it doesn't matter if he's supported by Flane, he's still gonna be dying because she doesn't really care about the damage reduction and Impenetrable Dark just ignores that. 
she just challenges Hector to a 1v1, which he might lose even if he's plus 10 merge. So this is the effect which makes her pretty unique. And then she's got 15% true damage based on her speed. So this is really fantastic for boosting up her damage output, uh, which was definitely lacking before. And uh, just stacking up speed is a pretty good idea on Lin in general uh, for activating Laws of Sake. And you get rewarded even more with the help of this true damage. And then finally, we have got Laws of Sake, which she got before. And with her new weapon refine, this gets complemented really well because you need the extra speed for activating this and her weapon refine gives her 10 extra speed. So Laws of Sake basically gives you the fire sweep effect against the melee foes if she has got 5 or more speed than the opponent. So this allows you to safely attack units like Brave Hector, Fallen Edelgard, many of the really really strong tanks and she can just attack them for free and there's nothing they can do because those kinds of tanks are not going to be running Null Counter Disrupt. Unfortunately for her, she does not really activate this effect against mages, uh, bow units, dagger units, staff units and stuff like that. But still the overall bulk that she gets from the weapon refine can help her in some of those matchups. And Laws of Sake overall and Swift Mulagir make her into a pretty solid unit. Now again, I want to clarify that she's not some kind of game breaking unit that is gonna just shatter any kind of unit. No, no, she's not that, but it's still a very, very impressive jump for a unit who was considered one of the worst legendaries to this kind of unit who can have pretty good damage output, has got these unique effects with Laws of Sake and the Impenetrable Dark, and can definitely deal with many of the meta threats, even at low merges. And if you provide her with some support, some merges, some premium fodder, and some dragon flowers, then she can definitely be a pretty competitive unit, in my opinion. Even though she's pretty good now, she still has her issues. Like I said, Laws of Sake doesn't really cover the entire spectrum of weapon types, like an actual fire suit bow, which someone like Shamir has. And she also has to choose between Laws of Sake or Green Duel Infantry for arena scoring. So not the best unit for arena scoring in general, um, but still overall, outside of arena game mode, she's going to be a pretty solid unit. And I've tested her in a couple of the days that we have got these weapon refines. And I was pleasantly surprised how uh, solid she has become now with this upgrade. So let's move on to some of her builds that he can run. On super budget, you can easily use her in Arena Assault and she can be a really fantastic unit there. So if you cannot really fodder any kind of premium skill, then go with Lancebreaker so that you can double the Hectors, Dimitris of the world and that can help you in Arena Assault for sure. Now if you want to invest a bit more into her, then she has two main options for slot B. Lot speed defense and null follow up. Lot speed defense helps you against many of the really fast units who have damage reduction skills and stuff like that. Kind of similar to the legendary Marth which I showed you before. Um, so Lulz B basically helps you trigger the Laws of Sake effect a lot more consistently by just ignoring any visible buffs of the opponent to their speed and also gives her a bit better damage output. Null follow up on the other hand allows you to just neutralize any kind of follow up negation skills of units like Brave Hector, Fallen Edelgard and so many of the other tanks which have these kinds of cheating skills. I personally prefer Null follow up from my testing. Um, Lulz B defense is definitely nice for those matchups but overall now follow up, I feel like gives her a bit more edge on those kinds of meta threats. Still, these two are really, really fantastic options. Her best sacred seal by far is going to be Blade Session because this gives you the most amount of offenses. Plus 9 attack and plus 9 speed is really good. And keep in mind, she gets true damage from her weapon. So stacking up speed with Blade Session is going to be really helpful. Like I said before, she really shines in Aetherate's defense because of the impenetrable dark she has got and the true damage that she can do. So compared to some of the other green bows like Wrath or Python, her damage output is actually going to be much much better against uh, meta threats like Far Save Brave Hector. And you mainly want to use her against those kinds of Far Save and Near Save teams so that she can just annoy them with the Fire Sweep effect, the true damage. Many times, uh, if they are at max investment, she's not going to be outright killing them, but still she is going to be a threat to them. Unfortunately, if the opponent uses someone like Far Save Hendriot or like Far Save Valentine Fae, then she's not going to be getting the Fire Sweep effect, so that can be annoying, but most of the time, uh, Far Save Brave Hectors are the most common type of tanking option which many people like to use. So on a budget, you can just go with Null Follow Up. You can get that from the Divine Code section. It's a must have, but on Super Budget, I guess you could go with Landsbreaker if you just want to test out the waters and see uh, if she's worth it or not. And then at higher investments, you can definitely go with Fatal Smoke to disable the Mystic Boost Sacred Seal of Brave Hector, tanks like those, and just prevent them from healing up any kind of HP. You can also use her in Aetherate's offense as a counter pick unit, mainly against Farsight Brave Hectors, Saros, and stuff like that. So she can function pretty well in the Astro Season as well. 
Um, but the thing is that I feel like she's much better on defense than she's on offense. Because on offense, you can definitely pick many of the other green mages or green units in general who can deal with those kinds of blue threats. So she's not going to be too unique in that aspect, but she's still an option and definitely no slouch uh, as a counter pick specifically for dealing with the blue foes. And finally, we, and finally, we move to the arena section, which is definitely going to be pretty annoying for Lin because loss of Sake means that she doesn't really score all that high, but her functionality is there. With Green Duel Infantry 4, she scores well, but her functionality with loss of Sake is gone. So a big part of her functionality goes away if you try to run the dual skill. It really depends on you if you're going to be wanting the functionality or the scoring overall not the best unit to be used in arena especially if you want to stay consistently in tier 21 but for people who are in tier 20 or are just in tier 20.5 or even lower if you have a plus 10 lin then you can definitely try to use her she's definitely not going to be a bad unit at this kind of max investment uh but yeah not the best scoring option compared to the modern ledgering units in general but still outside of Arena, she's pretty good as a unit in PvE and also in Aether Raids. For the Boon of Lane, you should definitely try to go with the plus speed IV, which is pretty much a no-brainer for her because she wants to have enough speed to always trigger the Laws of Sake's fire sweep effect and she of course gets the true damage. So it is in your best interest to simply go with the plus speed IV on her, no doubts about that whatsoever. Mailkana finally gets his weapon refine and he basically becomes a big ball of stats with his already present balanced stat spread. So his weapon refine is the most straightforward weapon refine that we have got in this batch. So this weapon basically gives him plus 8 to all of his stats with some really easy conditions to meet and then he gets 7 HP healing after each combat. So it's pretty straightforward, he gets a bunch of stats and some self-sufficient healing. They are really easy to trigger, especially in the enemy phase, as he's going to be used mostly there as a tank. And the healing is really good because you don't really have to run stuff like Mystic Boost Sacred Seal on him. Of course, you could run that if you want more healing, but basically it frees up his Sacred Seal most of the time and you could try to run something else. It is worth noting that Noe already has a weapon refine and she does give quite a bit of competition to our little boy Kana here because... For Kana, you have to spend Grails and trade Fruits, but Noe is present in the normal summoning pool. Not only that, she's got a better weapon refine with Distant Counter Breath and Debuff Neutralization. So it frees up her slotty skill, so she can run solo skills, stand skills, which can provide her unique effects. Kana has to run Distant Counter if he wants to Omni Tank, and Debuff Neutralization is extremely helpful in Aether Raid specifically. So Noe is still there if you're thinking of building up a free-to-play dragon. That said, this weapon refine isn't really bad or anything like that. It actually makes him a pretty good omni tank with all of those stats and the self healing can be utilized really well with some of the defensive skills as you'll see later on. But still keep in mind that unique effects and weapon refines always age better than pure stats, historically speaking, in the lifespan of this game. Kana is the type of unit that you only build up if you are planning to invest into him heavily with Mirzas and Dragon Flowers because every single extra stat point really helps him scale his bulk better and that works out really well with this kind of weapon refine and his balanced stat spread. So for the people who are trying to build him up or have already gotten him to plus and merge, you can definitely try to upgrade some of these skills here to make full use of his weapon refine. So the first build is a pretty obvious one with Distant Counter. I feel like Dragon Wall is the best slobby skill for Kana because he can get the damage reduction with this quite easily especially when he gets plus 8 resistance from his weapon refine and then he can stack it up with speed resistance solo secret seal and his balanced stat spread goes really well with the damage reduction skill and also the fact that he gets the self healing so it's really good for tanking in general so I would definitely prefer having Dragon Wall on a slot B over any other skill for the most part. On a budget, you can definitely try to run Resistance Smoke to get that extra damage and also make it better so that you can trigger Dragon Wall much easily and get more damage reduction. Speed Resistance Solo is really good as well because Kana can be fast. He doesn't really need Quicker Post or Dragon's Ire um, at max investment, so try to invest into his speed so that he can naturally double and a Sacred Seal like that will help you. You can also run Distant Pressure from Brave Marth. And this is a fantastic slot is skill for him because he gets the self healing from his weapon which means that the recall damage of distant pressure is pretty much cancelled and he recovers 2 HP on top of that. So distant pressure provides you with some extra speed which is of course really helpful and like I said if you're speed stacking Kana then this is just amazing skill for him if you can afford to get this. 
On premium investment, Attack Res Menace is by far the best skill with Dragon Wall because it creates a 12 point stat differential between you and your foe's resistance and that allows for some really nice activation of Dragon Wall to get the max damage reduction. And then you can just go with Attack Speed Solo or Attack Res Solo. He needs to be near his allies but he can easily utilize the solo skills and solo sacred seals with Mail Kana. He can also be used in Arena with B-Duel Infantry 4. Here I would say that Novi is a bit better because she can actually bait out many of the ranged units because of having distant counter in her breath. But still, Kana can function as a tank in Arena with that skill and Null Follow-Up is going to be helping you against many of the cheating skill and you can simply just stack up some attack and defense with the Sacred Seal and Slot C. But if you want to run Aether on him, then you can go with Steady Breath as your Sacred Seal. You can also go with Dragon Wall in Arena and here every single stat point is going to be mattering so if you have Summoner support on him that's even better and Attack Res Menace like I said again has really good synergy with the Dragon Wall skill. In Aether Raids again Novi gives him competition. Debuff neutralization is such a strong tool in Aether Raids because we have got No who debuffs you with Attack Speed Menace. We have Mirabilis who can debuff you with her Dance. We have Bright Shrine, we have Dark Shrine, we have so many debuffs going on in Aether Raids that the debuff neutralization of Novi is extremely strong. But still if you want to use Male Kana in Aether Raids then this is how you do it. With Dragon Wall of course, getting that damage reduction, getting that self healing, being extremely tanky and you can easily buff him up because with summoner support he basically has more HP than the max level panic manner at this moment in the game so that's really good and you can just run glimmer and not really run a healing special because he already gets the healing from his weapon. You can also use him in a different kind of way instead of using him as an omni tank you can use him as a melee tank who can be paired up with a far save unit. So this is a more specialized way of using male Kana in Aether Raids especially. You can run this build anywhere else as well but in Aether Raids this is really good because you've got attack speed unity which means that Note's menace skill is going to be just powering you up and you can also have null follow up to make sure that cheating skills do not just stop you from making your follow up attacks like Saros and her mirror impact. We have legendary Sigurd with his auto follow up. So null follow up helps you quite a lot there. And you can have Steady Breath and Ignis so that you can hit really really hard and take out those kinds of bulky units like Legendary Seagard and Note and Saros. So this overall needs to be paired up with some kind of far save unit so that they can tank the range units and Male Kana can tank the physical threats. Which he's not that bad at doing because blue is pretty good color for a near save tank and he's mostly going to be having advantages or neutral matchups. So he can definitely cover this kind of role and be much better and actually have a way of dealing with debuffs compared to the distant counter build. So let me know what you think about these weapon refines in the comment section down below. Of course a lot of the discussion is centered around Tuzo Legends 3 weapon refines but still these are quite important and significant as well so I'll be eager to hear that in the comments and make sure to share this video with your friends who are thinking of building up any of these units or are trying to refine them. This video can definitely help them with a lot of the different options which I went over. So I hope you all enjoyed this video. If you did then make sure to leave a like and a comment and if you really really enjoyed it then you can always use super thanks or become a member of my channel to support me directly. I want to thank all of my YouTube members for their constant support and if you want to see more reviews like these then make sure to subscribe and hit the notification bell because YouTube sub boxes are about as functional as laws of sake against mages. So with that said I'll see you guys next time. Thank you so much for watching and have a great day.